In a lot of my recent videos, I've talked about CPU performance and getting bottlenecked even on high-end systems, even at 4K resolution, stuff like that. And I've seen comments where people ask, are they ever gonna focus on making a gaming-oriented CPU? One that doesn't target being good at everything, it just targets being good at gaming. And the answer to that question is they already did last generation AMD with their 5800X3D, which did not target being the best CPU overall in multi-threaded performance, so not productivity, but it, by having eight cores and 16 threads, it has more than enough cores and threads for gaming. And then it puts the extra 3D V cache and games are one of the things that is most responsive to increased cache. And that was an amazing choice for a CPU for a lot of people. However, with AMD's new generation, they are going to have a successor to that, the 7800X3D. And that is also gonna be an eight core 16 thread chip with the 3D V cache that specifically targets being the best gaming CPU in the world. In the meantime, uh, you know, we have to wait until April to get that because what we got today is not that and it's a bit weird. Unlike the 800X3D chips, which target being the best gaming CPU in the world, what we got today is the 7950X3D, which targets being a best of both worlds kind of a thing. It's trying to be a jack of all trades by having the extra V cache on one eight core 16 thread CCD and having uh, the not having that extra V cache on the other core, which allows those cores to clock a little bit higher because the downside to the V cache is that you get some thermal issues and you can't quite reach the clock speeds that you can without the 3D V-cache. So you have this other core that doesn't have the V-cache but has the higher clock speeds, and now you have 16 cores and 32 threads. So overall, this is gonna be fantastic at productivity, and it's gonna be fantastic at gaming, but then you're gonna have a few small issues. Number one is that because you're on the two CCDs, there's gonna be some latency penalty there. But also number two, you're gonna to have to rely on Windows and the chipsets and all of that, uh, drivers, whatever, choosing the correct core to run your task on. Specifically gaming should usually get those uh, cash, extra cash cores. Now, one interesting thing we'll see in the reviews today is that the uh, the core the CCD without the vcache can be turned off, in which case you basically have a 7800X3D at a higher price point, but we can kind of simulate its performance. Uh, so we can get an idea of what to expect from that. And so overall, I guess what we're in here is a weird situation, which is the uh, what I have behind me right now is AMD's official performance claims, but we'll compare those to what actual third-party reviews are getting. But AMD is claiming that they have the world's fastest gaming CPU with the 7950X3D, and reviews, for the most part, point to that being correct. But they also point to the fact that the 7800X3D is going to take that crown, and it's going to do it for a lot less money in April. Also, um, they didn't seed review samples of the 7900 non-50X3D, which is in, in an even weirder place because it's the same idea, but instead of having eight cores and 16 threads on each CCD, one with cache, one without, you get six cores, 12 threads on each CCD, one with cache and one without. But the thing is, now where does this fall? How does this make any sense? Because if you just want the gaming performance, wait until April. If you just want the, uh, the multitasking performance, um, Honestly, why are you getting the X3D chips anyway? But if you were gonna get one, uh, the uh, 50 X3D makes the more sense. So that one's in kind of a weird place. So I think I see why AMD didn't seed those. My, my guess is they exist because some chips just didn't have all of the CCDs functioning properly, right? Right, you didn't get all eight cores working. So now we have these extra parts, we need to sell them. So we might as well have that SKU exist. Anyway, here's what I'm getting at though. So if we pop into pricing, the 7950X3D is $700 MSRP um, and versus the 7950X at, at $590. So if you wanted an AMD multitasking uh, CPU, the thing is that the 7950X for $509 is slightly better at productivity because all of its cores have the full clock speed potential because they don't have the V-cache issue and most likely in productivity, the clock speed is more useful. Although the 7950X3D isn't gonna be very far behind that. Um, also, you could go the Intel route with a 13900K for $570, which has excellent multi-threading performance and excellent gaming performance. 
Um, so this 7950X3D is in a weird place. Like I said, in April, we're going to see the 7800X3D coming in at $450. And while that's still very expensive, if the whole point here is the only reason to go 3D vCache is because it targets gaming, then why not just go for the 7800X3D at $450, you just need to wait until April. The only person where I think this, uh, the 7950X3D makes sense is either you just don't wanna wait, or you're somebody who does both productivity extremely seriously and gaming extremely seriously. Um, and so you want to have both of those things, but you don't want to build a separate PC for both, right? <laughs> so again, I think this is just really, really limited in its use case because it's trying to do, do everything instead of just be the best at one thing. And the 7800X3D, I think, is going to be better at just being the world's greatest gaming CPU. Now, if we look at overall performance and reviews on these things, and by this point, you've probably figured out, I was never trying to hide this, I've said it in previous videos, I don't review CPUs, I do not get... CPU review samples. This is my meta-analysis of the situation, and I have read a ton of reviews. Now, um, the results of these reviews are interesting. Again, we've seen AMD's claims, right? AMD's claims are based on uh, versus the the K, the 3900K, not KS. The KS is really kind of pointless, but it is one or two or maybe 3% faster than the 3900K. So it is interesting that they made their uh, world's fastest gaming uh, claim without going up against the KS version. I understand the KS version makes no real sense from a value perspective, but we're talking world's fastest gaming CPU, a value should be thrown out the window. Also AMD's uh, performance numbers over here were done on DDR5 6000 memory, uh, when, which is about as fast as the 7950X 3D can take advantage of. Um, but Intel CPUs generally have better memory controllers and can get higher clocked memories. Um, so as we look through some of the review results, it'll be interesting to keep your eye out for that. Uh, so for example, Tom's hardware is seeing a very healthy lead for the 7950X3D versus the 3900KS, and again, the 3900K just coming in two frames per second, uh, less than that on average. Um, so again, th those are very similar, but once you enable, um, uh, all of the like PBO and Expo memory and you get the 3900KS uh, clocking higher, um, the the differences, well, are different. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and so you just get slightly different results uh, based on how you do the testing, which games, because some games are more cache sensitive than others. Um, also, like I said, I'm very interested in what if you disable one of the CCDs uh, to simulate what the 7800X3D will be like. Uh, Tech Power Up did that, so they have some 1080p gaming performance numbers. Now they tested other resolutions and all of that, and I'm not trying to steal results from um, from all these places. Like, like links will be in my description, and please read their and watch their full reviews. What I'm trying to do here is give my meta analysis on the situation based on the information that's available to back up my uh, recommendation to basically almost everyone should wait for the 7800X3D unless for some reason you are somebody who is like a power multi-thread user and a power gamer and you need a CPU that's going to be the best of both worlds but not the best at either one of those two things. Anyway, with one CC CCD disabled, um, we're seeing just a slight increase to performance, but it is an increase to performance, right? So when you just have the 3D vCache, this will be more like the 7800X3D, you'll get this. Now, some people will be like, well, that's not that big of a deal overall. Why would I bother waiting? We're bothering waiting because the 7800X3D is not only just slightly better, fine, it's only slightly, but it's $450 instead of $700. That's why, if all you need is the gaming performance, it will be slightly better and it will do it for less money. That's what I'm saying, okay? Um, Tech Power Up was not the only review outlet that I found uh, that did this. Um, we also saw, um, I think uh, I had, um, hardware unboxed doing this, although, wait a second, my uh, tabs seem to have lost their place. Um, 
I lost the place. Anyway, uh, this is just one one game result. Please look at their like game average or whatever. But again, in general, um, Hardware Unboxed was getting, when they have 7800X3D simulated here, what they're doing is the same thing we saw in this Tech Power Up article, where they are removing one of the, one of the CCDs um, to make it just be like the eight core 16 thread V-cache. And again, we're seeing better performance from the 7800X3D uh, when we when we simulate it, right? But again, you could get that for less money. So I'm just showing you that there are multiple review outlets uh, with these results. Now, I did want to mention um, Factorio in particular because this result was very interesting. Again, this is from the Hardware Unboxed review where I'm saying like the other issue isn't just that you're getting the same thing for less money if you're talking gaming performance on the 7800X3D, but I'm, I'm saying that if Windows chooses the wrong core to put the game on, it can be very, very bad. Now this isn't gonna happen very often and the overall performance will still be good. But take a look at what happened uh, in the Hardware Unboxed review with Factorio. Here, higher is better. And you can see that the simulated 7800X3D is scoring 433 versus the 7950X3D scoring 249. And that's because it was putting the, uh, the game task onto the wrong CCD. And the 7800X3D just won't have that problem. Now, um, so, th so that's my overall point, <laughs> okay? Uh, basically, it's looking like if you look at the relative performance um, in, uh, in applications, right? In productivity, the 7950X3D is not the world's fastest processor. The 13900K, or depending on the workload, the 7950 non-X3D is going to be better, right? Um, if you talk about gaming performance, the 7950X3D does seem to be the world's fastest gaming CPU, although the margins over the 13900K are slim, but it can vary a lot depending on the game or the set of games that you use. So overall, that's what, what we're left with. You get a, a, a jack of all trades that is a master of none for a very high price. So. My overall take on this is get the 7800X3D when it comes out if you want the world's fastest gaming CPU. Uh, if you want um, a really good multi-clocker and, and gamer, uh, the 13900K is already out right now for less money than the 7950X3D. And if you put that extra money towards um, really high speed RAM, um, you get very, very similar gaming results. Although the, the, don't get me wrong, the 7950X3D is better. But like I said, the 7800X3D, if your interest is gaming, just makes more sense. What do you guys think in the comment section? Personally, I do wanna update my, um, my, my gaming CPU, my, my benchmarking CPU, which is also my personal gaming CPU, uh, which currently is a 7700X. Why did I buy the 7700X? 7700X. I bought the 7700X because I wanted a good CPU that I could then upgrade to the best CPU in the same test bench without having to build an entire new PC. And I'm going to do that when the 7800X 3D comes out because that I think will be not having the same issues that the 7950X 3D might have with uh, getting the correct CCD assigned by Windows and it's just gonna be less money. So it just makes more sense if your interest is gaming and I'm gonna be benchmarking games. So this is gonna be my choice. I do think it is going to be better. A lot of people have been like, why don't you have a 13900K for your gaming benchmarks? I'm like, because it's like a few months until this comes out, which will then be the best one. And I don't wanna build a whole new PC when that comes out to have the best. So just for a few months, I had one that was slightly not the best. <laughs> anyway, so that's what I'm doing personally. I'm waiting for the 7800X3D. Um, I don't blame you if you wanna buy one of these, but uh, I think it only makes sense if you are doing a lot of productivity and a lot of gaming. And if that's the case, the 13900K also makes a lot of sense. Um, so pick, pick which one you prefer here, I guess. Um, there's a price advantage for the 13900K and throw that extra money towards faster RAM if you want there. And I think motherboard pricing is a little better here as well. Um, so it's kind of all over the place. I hope all of you have an excellent day.